Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, it is, thank you again, Shauna, for that warm introduction. It's great to be here in California amongst what I believe are community leaders that are all really thinking about where is the nexus between climate change solutions and how people get affected by it. I think the current pandemic has got, uh, gotten a reveal reality of our connectedness where actions and events in one part of the world can actually have an impact on another part of the world. I will look at this with the Global South perspective. So the Global South today encompasses literally the world's largest population, yet are not contributing as much as the Global North when it comes to carbon emissions. Climate change, however, has impacted the Global South in a very significant way. When the world was dealing with economic and humanitarian crises during COVID, in India, 1.4 billion people were dealing with climate calamities. From droughts to locust attacks, to cyclones, to floods. In fact, India today is the largest flood hotspot in the country, followed by the US and China. And we can all understand that this is an important nexus for all of us, because let's be real, climate change is a man-made problem, and I'm here to tell you that women will solve it. So the bottom 50% of India literally own nothing. They're not the carbon contributors, yet they are the most vulnerable when it comes to climate attacks. And we have to understand that if we don't react quickly to reach 800 million people to make better decisions and equip them collectively, we're talking about a massive disaster that's about to ensue. And I'll tell you why. Because those 800 million people, rural India, is rapidly changing and growing. With internet connectivity, smartphone access, and aspiration, they're actually ready to be the future consumers of the world. Which means that 800 million people will start contributing very significantly to the climate problem. Because let's face it, 800 million people have a shared connection reality. They all want to be economically empowered. They all want to have a better life for their children. They all want a life of dignity. And they want easy access to convenience of things that they want. They are just like you and I. They want an easy life. So what happens if rural consumers start consuming the way that you and I consume? It's going to be a disaster, folks. And the reality is that there's an opportunity right now to be able to understand this generation of consumers that are actually kind of different. We can influence them to adapt and behave potentially differently. The critical nexus is incentives and influence. How do we influence rural customers to adapt and purchase in a different way that allows them to be climate and carbon friendly? To respond to the old adage that customers are kings, I will tell you that rural women are queens. We've learned that when you invest in women, they're a massive community connector, they're a trust builder, and they actually, if given the right tools, are ready to behave in a certain way that is a lot more empowering, impactful, and beneficial. This is what we've understood at Frontier Markets. We've been looking at women as influencers and people that are game changers. We've built a strategic initiative where we've worked with 20,000 women entrepreneurs who we call Settle Jeevan Sahilis, or Easy Life Friends, who've been using our technology to connect over a million families to climate-friendly solutions by leveraging data and understanding the challenges that they face. Today, these women have been able to help us understand who this rural customer is, what are the challenges that they face, and how do we design impactful solutions at scale. And we've been able to prove that you can do both good and make a lot of money. We've been a profitable business that's been able to help rural customers really reach the right solutions to the right people at the right level at scale. But the point here is that we need to understand women. So women are community enablers. They are incredible influencers. But every time you hear about women, we kind of start talking about empowering women. Let's talk about the fact that women are already powerful, that they actually already have a nexus and ability to actually make changes happen, and we need to invest in them versus try to find their flaws. Because the fact is that around the world, women are influencers, they're decision makers. When it comes to household consumption, digital financial services, healthcare, they actually are the ones that are making choices and decisions for their families. So if we start understanding the position of women and the power that they play, it's a huge opportunity. Because she is a mother. She's also a farmer. She's a community member. She's an educator. 
And my favorite, she's a powerful entrepreneur. She's an enabler. She's an influencer. She knows how to connect people. And she's highly motivated to be an impact creator. Do you know why? Because 90% of women's money, when they earn it, they reinvest it back into their families and to their communities. So what about climate? Well, if we give her the right tools, she can become a climate solver. And we've seen it. An instrumental person that's looking at climate resilience, adaptation, and change. So meet Anita. Anita is a farmer, a mother, a person in a community who lives in Uttar Pradesh, which is India's largest state in the country. She's grown with climate realities. She's dealt with crazy seasonalities from floods to droughts. She's a farmer and she's lost almost 50% of her crop yields due to the damage that climate has created. So much so that she's insanely indebted to um, money lenders and her husband had to move from his village and become a migrant laborer just to cover that cost. Anita became a Sarojivan Saheli, and she immediately used the technology and reached out to another thousand women and said, hey, are my climate challenges the same as yours? Are we facing the same realities? Collecting data, Anita helped us create business opportunities. We immediately partnered with clean tech companies, with climate funders, with ag tech companies, and we said, hey, let's introduce some cool solutions. Today, Anita has helped over a thousand rural women adopt to organic farming, reduce pesticides, create climate resilient seeds, and sold solar appliances. All of a sudden, she's been a carbon reducer, she's been a family creator, she's been an income provider, and ultimately, most importantly, she's helped all of us make money and impact. There are over 100 million people like Anita that are actually ready to be that game changer and that opportunity. And when we think about that nexus, this is when the impact becomes really interesting. So imagine that we're not investing in just 20,000 women, but a million women like Anita who are ready to make those decisions and those game changers. So when I look at the room and I think about policymakers, corporates, investors, philanthropists that are all trying to figure out where does the money go? Where do we invest? How do we think about climate change? Let's just also take a moment to say, why don't we just invest in women climate solvers? Because 100 million women can make a billion people's lives change. And the nexus of climate is really about the global south. Because let's be real, people. If India becomes a carbon guzzler, we're all in trouble. And this is a huge opportunity for us to think about where markets, people, and realities can make a big difference and change. Thank you, everyone, for your time.